kids can make their way to Children's Church right now. The rest of us are going to turn to Joshua 20. Kids can make their way. And those of you that are teaching, thank you very much. We appreciate that. There's an odd chapter here in Joshua 20, and yet it's very, very well known. If you have a Bible, you're going to want to turn there. Yep, kids, you can just walk right across as good. Right over to that door is perfect. Good job. Uh, Joshua 20 is a short one. It's only nine verses long, so we can knock this out in no time at all. In the distribution of all the land of Israel... There's this chapter stuck in, and and Moses said it way earlier. He said, I want you to do this in the land, don't forget. In fact, there's three different passages in the Bible that speak of the very specific distribution of land for six cities. Very carefully located six cities called the cities of refuge. Literally, cities of safety. This is where you run to these six cities. I remember growing up in Elyria, Ohio, and I remember this little phase that went through the city where certain houses scattered all over the community would put this symbol in the window and the symbol meant it's a safe house. So kids going to school and home from school, and they're being chased, or they don't feel safe, something's going on, they all knew which houses they could go to. It was a, it was a safe house. That concept is very common. In fact, if you were to look up um, how many use the name refuge in any type of Nonprofit organization, uh, safety for women hiding from family members or those for safety. It's maybe a house of refuge or a place of refuge. It's used, and it's all from here. This is the text. This is where it comes from, that concept. In a broader sense, it's for me and you that need refuge. And there's going to be ultimately the application is how does this apply? How is this, these six cities of refuge, how is it that they can be symbolic in our lives? And they were real cities earlier on. But this is how we do it. If you have a Bible there, It's Joshua 20. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Say to the people of Israel, Appoint the cities of refuge of which I spoke to you through Moses, that the manslayer who strikes any person without intent or unknowingly may flee there. Without intent or unknowingly may flee there. They shall be for you a refuge from the avenger of blood. That's from the kinsman redeemer, from the redeemer. This is the the Ruth passage, if you've studied some of that. He shall flee to one of these cities and shall stand at the entrance of the gate of the city and explain his case to the elders of that city, which is almost like a little court hearing. Then they shall take him into the city and give him a place, and he shall remain there with them. And if the avenger of blood pursues him... That's a family member. It's usually the the closest family member. So somebody gets killed, the nearest kin is the one that needs to avenge that blood. So they're the ones following after to get you. And if the avenger of blood pursues him, they shall not give up the manslayer into his hand because he struck his neighbor unknowingly, didn't hate him in the past. And he'll remain in that city until he has stood before the congregation for judgment and until the death of him who was high priest at the time. Then the manslayer may return to his own town, his own home, to the town in which he fled. This is a fascinating setup. The cities 
because they're scattered. You remember as we were talking about like Jericho and all the cities they were conquering, they were kind of handled as their own kingdoms. So they handled all their own laws. It was true then too. You're in a city in Israel, in the promised land, but if you're in a city, they handled, they did their own self-governing. Except for this. Not this one, because it probably isn't going to be fair. This one had to be taken out of their hands. So if there's an accidental death, you just got to get to one of those cities. And you get to the one of those cities, that's your place of refuge until the whole thing is sorted out. It's a bit of an asylum. It's for their protection. There's so much blood work going on here. You get there, and you stand trial, ultimately, but as you stand trial, and they discovered that, oh, no, it was definitely an accident. Ah, it's chopping wood, and the axe handle came off, and Bob over there. Ah, I was sorry about that. And that's the story you're sticking with, by the way. And it flew off. Sorry about that, Bob. Bob? Uh, run to the city of refuge as fast as you can. And we're going to explore this and see if it was really an accident. So best case, it was an accident. It really has come to determine it's an accident. So you get to go home and live your life? No, actually no. There was bloodshed. You stay there until the high priest dies. Whoever's high priest at the time, until he dies. You're going to stay there. Somebody has to redeem you. There has to be atonement for the blood, even though it was an accident. This was, this was life-changing. There's even rabbinical writings that if you died on your way there, or you die while you're there, you're buried and you still stay there until the high priest dies. That's how critical it was that the death of the high priest, the blood shed by the high priest, will cover and atone for even the accidental. So Joshua, devoted energy, organized this. And it's a picture of the Christian life. It's a picture of two things. One is of Jesus, we'll mention in a moment. The other is, we are a place of refuge for people who need it. We live our life like, like we're just created, like just to do our family stuff and our work, and everything is at the disposal of my family and my work, and church fits in. There's a category for that. No, we're actually a place of refuge for people. We're where people go so that we can get them to Jesus. Because ultimately, in the New Testament, we see Jesus is the fulfillment of the city of refuge. He's the place that we go. Take a look at the next slide just so you maybe see it. Um, yeah, it's a little small. I believe all six cities are still around today, not necessarily, of course, known as cities of refuge. Do you know what Transjordan means? You'll see it in your study Bible now and then. It'll say blah, 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 Transjordan. Transjordan means that side of the Jordan River. That's the Dead Sea, the big one at the bottom, the Jordan River that goes up to the Sea of Galilee. So you see there's three cities on the Transjordan side. Golan, that's in the news all the time, the Golan Heights, Ramoth, Bezer, and then three on the other side. The idea is you can get to one. It's accessible. You can make your way. Specifically if you accidentally kill somebody. But look at the meaning of these as we look at refuge exactly for whom. Who is this actually for? Very specifically those who kill somebody accidentally. 
But look at the names of the city. Each city has its own name carefully. Kadesh means righteousness or holiness. It's for the one who's unclean. Shechem means shoulder or strength for the one who's hurting. Hebron means fellowship for the lonely. Bezer, fortress for the helpless, the struggling. Ramoth, heights for those who are downcast. Golan for the tempted means separated. I just put them together. Listen to this great word. Aren't we all unclean, lost, lonely, helpless, downcast, and tempted at different times, fluctuating between them all? The cities are for us. I mean, this is life. You say, I'm doing pretty good right now. Yes, <laughs> the older we get, we go, enjoy it. Because it just, it's this. And you look at those. Some days, I'm just unclean. The things that you're looking at, the things that you're, uh, places you're going, you're just, you're just unclean. You're in that phase. Others, it's lost or lonely. You're confused. Life is confusing. You don't know where you go. You could be so lonely, and you can be in a house full of people. Or helpless. Downcast. Tempted. The cities of refuge were these beautiful six cities carefully located as a message that he is refuge for us. So now look at these, these verses. Think of some of these Old Testament verses. I love Proverbs 18 says this, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. It's city of refuge. That's what they're talking about. It's, it's known. The Talmud teaches that the roads going to the cities of refuge are wider than other roads. They're better maintained than other roads. These city gates has been said that they don't close. They're just available. They have to be available. And that's all the way back to Moses saying, these are critical for us. And the reason is, like it was with everything else with the laws, it's to represent who's coming. Who in the, in the Psalms, those of you that read Psalms, like maybe every day you read a Psalm, who is our refuge? God is our refuge. He is our strength. He's who we go to. He's of the heights. They're actually naming one of the cities of refuge. The Bible says that we are desperately wicked and sinful. We have a population in our country today where 8.7% of age 12 and up 8.7, who use illegal drugs, 12 million alcoholics, as many as 30% of America's admitted to have struggled with alcohol. 50% of first marriages fail in America, 67% of second marriages, and 74% of third marriages end in divorce. We can live every day like it's all fine and everything's okay, but the truth is when you and I lay our head on the pillow at night, we admit to the struggles, either unclean, lost, lonely, helpless. It depends on the day. We're in desperate need of refuge. And Jesus Christ is our refuge. So it's what we're doing is we're giving the other angle to the reason why we sit so quietly in the morning with our Bible open and we find that place. Now you can use a different analogy. It's we find that place of refuge because you don't know what your day is going to be like. 
You have no idea what you're going to face, good or bad. You don't know what kind of temptation you're going to face. Guys, you're risking your whole family, and you're acting as though it was just a decision. No, you're risking your whole family. Because our own minds don't think that clearly. We don't think right because we're lonely and we're meeting needs quickly or we're tempted in some area or we're distraught and we're downcast. We're in this array of life that just keeps moving and going along. That's what the world does. That's not what we do. We have a place of refuge. Jesus Christ in Hebrews 6 actually is referred to as our refuge. Jesus Christ is the place that we go. And that's why we love to get together as a family because we're all in this together and we have our faith and belief in Jesus Christ as our refuge and we all can come here and you can be honest about your struggles in here. We're not going to judge you for that. If there's anywhere to go, anywhere in this town where you should feel comfortable to say whatever you need to say and want to say, it's here because this is a place of refuge. And you say, oh, but you don't know how bad it is. Oh, no, I can look around. I can guess. (laughs) We can guess. Everything is represented in this room. What do we act like it's not? Some of the most downcast are right now listening online, or you're sitting here, and you're going, oh, yeah, you don't know what downcast is, or lonely, or tempted, and you're trapped heartbroken. A city set aside very specifically, it can't be another city, had to be these cities. It's the six. Here's some similarities. In Acts 4 it says, and there is salvation there is sanctuary, there is refuge, there is peace, there is rest in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which you're saved. It's the name of Jesus. So many of the New Testament, as we look back into the New Testament, so many of the illusion, it's city of refuge. He's fulfilling it in so many different ways. Anybody can make their way there. It didn't, you didn't have to be Jewish. Anybody. It's wide open. They're arranged so that any stranger, any traveler, in fact, in Joshua 20, in verse 9, it says that whoever kills a person. Yeah, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him and always left unlocked always left open so faith in Jesus Christ then you open your devotional book for the day or you open your Bible and you just sit imagine approaching the city sit quietly and just rest a moment And say it, God, I'm, I'm downcast today. I'm really weak today. You know I'm doing things I shouldn't. God, I'm, I want out. I don't want to do this. I have a day planned. And I have no idea how it's going to go. God, I've done damage. Maybe you haven't. Maybe it's potentially. You just, you come clean And open the Bible and say, I'm in your hands. Guide me. Teach me. Get me through this. He's he's the rock. He's the fortress. He's our refuge. He's our strength. That's why we grab on to him. Because otherwise, we don't even know which way's up.
you remember, I'll just end with this thought. Um, I think it's funny how little kids, I remember it myself, they build little safe places. Little tents, do you ever do the, uh, where you, you move a chair over and you get a blanket over it and then over the couch and you wanna, you build a little spot, right? And then, of course, if I'm dad, I'm filling it with snacks. I mean, it's categories. Okay, salty things at this end, the sugary ones over here. I mean, it's like, it's like a den is ultimately what it is. And a kid feels so safe in there. They just love that. You could be sleeping under an overpass. And you're like, I have nothing. Yeah, but you've got this little tent, and you're on the sloped area, and you're you're going to call it a sleeping bag, and it's not because you don't have one, but you're dry and you're safe. And you feel like a million bucks. You're like, that's all I needed was this enclosure, and I feel safe. We dream in life for the safe place. We dream in life for that place in which we can go, and it's not physical. It's never been physical. The huge house, the beautiful, that could be the most unsafe place ever. It could be the studio apartment. You create it on your own. And all of these things from the little child that builds the little tent that's it's his own little safe place to older and we have this place set aside, it's all symbolic because the safe place has always been and will always be our relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ, there's the safe place. No matter where we are. And so tomorrow morning, we wake up and we open it and say, I'm just, I I can't believe I get to talk to you. I love you. Thank you. Talk about your struggles. Thank him for the safety. And you've created this place You've made room for this place that he can be your tower of refuge. And then you glance over and you've got to face a day. And it might be full of some tough decisions. It might be full of more job interviews. It might be full of more being demeaned by somebody or something. You've got to face a day, and you go, I want this place of refuge to go with me. I want to live my life in the place of refuge, in my relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ. This is how some of the greatest men and women in history who have died for their faith walk to the gallows or walk to their death as if they were commanding the crowd. How is that possible? How can they give up their life with such confidence because they have a place of refuge and it had nothing to do with those soldiers and it had nothing to do with that abuse because there was something far higher. How did Jesus command his way to the cross and on the cross look to the needs of others? This is impossible. It is impossible. Unless you have found that place of refuge, in your relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ. It's a one-time act in which you're born into the family of God, and then it's the discipline of living within that relationship as we continually submit ourselves to Him and live within the protection and the strength of the fortress and the refuge of our Heavenly Father. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for Jesus, for the one today who's tired of running from sin, maybe trapped by hopelessness, that they find you. And Heavenly Father, for all of us, that we don't live another day outside of the wonderful refuge and shelter of a relationship with you through faith in Jesus. Amen.